On today's video, we're going to do a low light test on uh, focusing on Blackmagic's uh, Ursa Mini 4.6K's cinema camera. Now, for comparison, I'll probably uh, throw some images from uh, Sony's now venerable A7S because we, we all know that to be uh, a very good low light camera and I happen to have it here today. Um, now, this test is going to be simple, quick, and I believe repeatable. And again, I just need to know, you know, really how many foot candles or what's the minimum number of foot candles do we need to generate a usable image from this camera. Now, um, let's see, this is a new camera to me, but I know in earlier examples when they first came out, uh, we had some severe cross hatching at 1600 ISO. So, you know, that ISO simply uh, wasn't usable. Of course, we had the uh, magenta vignette on the corners um, on some instances, especially shooting, you know, shooting the skylines. Uh, but without further ado, let me just uh, jump right into this test and uh, see what we come up with. Now, before we get into the footage, I just want to quickly go over my uh, post workflow uh, so you know what I did. Um, with all the footage, uh, the first thing I did was I raised the exposure until the, the high side of my face was about 70% or 70 IREs. Um, after that, I lowered the blacks or the floor until they were just above, just until, until just about the clipping point or until it kind of looked like a black curtain and I could still see a little bit of texture, uh, you know, on the curtains. Um, and then the uh, saturation, I bumped up to 150% because we're shooting in the film gamma with uh, the UM46. And that was it, those three adjustments, uh, exposure slider, blacks, and saturation. Okay, so let's take a look. Now I said this was gonna be a fast test, a repeatable test, and this is what I really wanna know. Can we record at one foot candle? Like literally one foot candle. And my meter's telling me, um, I'm about one, you know, I go between, you know, 1.1 to 0.9 foot candles, depending on my distance from the candle. But here we are. Okay, we are at 1600 on the camera, um, the uh, 2500 degrees Kelvin, and one foot candle. So let's take a look. Now with the uh, candlelight picture, um, obviously we had big problems with the uh, UM46. Um, I see I'm seeing a lot of uh, what I would call fixed noise pattern. Uh, the noise is arranged mostly in a vertical, and you can see the vertical pattern to it. Um, obviously, we had to bring the signal up quite a bit, and, uh, you know, this is kind of what I saw in the past. But what I, I haven't seen, um, again, I'm shooting uh, Ultra HD, uh, 30, was it was a 3820. Um, and in, when I bring it into the editing system, I do not see the crosshatch, at least. I just see the vertical, primarily vertical uh, fixed noise patterns on the image. And now here we have the Sony a7S at one foot candle. Uh, the camera is rated at uh, ISO of 1600. And of course, you know, that's all kind of relative with manufacturers these days, but we need to start someplace and same uh, T-stop on the lens, Sony a7S. Now with the a7S footage, the image is considerably cleaner with uh, a single candlelight uh, illuminating the entire room. Now the black areas, the, the dark curtains or the black curtains, uh, there is still quite a bit of noise there. I do think a little bit of neat video or another noise reducer can clean that up uh, as much as we want or to, you know, or maybe not. Um, it's certainly a usable image. But again, you know, as soon as you get those dark textureless features, um, it really accentuates the noise. In this setup, I've washed this whole scene with one foot candle of light. So instead of, you know, trying to actually light up the whole, uh, light up everything with a single solitary candle. We have a soft light up back in the distance and we are at one foot candle at the black curtain. And of course, what we're really curious about is on screen right here, what is the noise like on this black uh, curtain and screen left uh, on this white photo paper, do we see much noise compared to, of course, you know, my, the texture on my face and this gray sweatshirt. Um, so that's what this test is, one foot candle. Now at one foot candle, um, on the black curtain, I'm still seeing patterns, uh, the fixed noise pattern on the black curtain. Again, you know, I did have to increase the exposure, of course, uh, on this image, but the, the white area and then my face and sweatshirt, it's really acceptable. It's really not that bad. And I think at one foot candle, um, as long as you have some texture in your image, it looks to be, uh, you know, quite usable. Okay. And now we're at two foot candles. We have our whole scene at two foot candles, 1600 ISO, and a wide open end lens at an f1.4, 50 millimeter. Okay, at two foot candles, I still see a hint 
of a uh, pattern on the black curtains. Now it's not as noticeable, it's not as pronounced as uh, when we were at one foot candle, but at two foot candles, um, it's still there. But actually at this point, I think even actually with one foot candle, I think you could probably add some grain to the image to uh, kind of help break that up. And again, I think it's, it's definitely usable. Okay, so now we are at uh, four foot candles, you know, right in front of the uh, black curtain. And let me step over here. And I could tell from the uh, waveform monitor right on top of the lens that my face um, is right about 60 IREs. Um, I definitely don't want to go, you know, brighter on my face at this point. So the camera is still at 1600 ISO, lens is wide open, and we are at four foot candles. Now at this point, I'm not going to really test uh, 800 ISO, and the main reason is um, I tend to use it all the time, um, and it seems to be, you know, certainly seems to uh, perform well at 800. And this is really, um, how well does this camera perform at the rated 1600 ISO? Now at four foot candles, the uh, noise pattern on the curtain, and the black curtains, uh, pretty much disappears. Um, for the most part, I can't really see it. I used to see something like very faint blue streaks, and uh, I don't see them anymore. So at four foot candles, looks like... Uh, Again, we've got a real solid uh, starting point, but again, if you use a little bit of uh, grain to the image, um, that could really help break up, you know, post grain, that could really help break up uh, any fixed noise pattern we have on the image. That wraps up my low light test of Blackmagic's Ursa Mini 4.6K cinema camera. Now again, this test is really just um, a way for me to gather some baseline data on using this camera at 1600 ISO, because in the past we've had trouble with, uh, you know, using the camera at 1600. So now I know that if I have uh, a base ambient light measure, light meter reading of at least two foot candles, I'm pretty confident about using this camera at 1600. Um, now some of you may have been wondering, you know, why am I using a light meter? And of course, why am I referencing foot candles in this day and age? Uh, the reason is very simple. To me, it's, uh, it's becoming a faster way of working with a crew. Um, now in the old days when we shot with Kodak film or Fuji film, you know, the, the speed ratings were pretty set and very consistent because we're using film stock. Um, I'm finding with the digital cinema cameras, uh, the speed ratings or the sensitivity is, uh, is very relative to each manufacturer. Um, so when working with a crew, instead of, you know, asking for a T-stop and then everyone's going back and forth, you know, looking at the monitor, see if we have enough light, um, I'm trying to retrain myself to go back to working with foot candles and light meters so that Again, when working with an experienced gaffer, I could simply say, you know, I need a super soft key light up here from right about this direction, but give me 15 foot candles right here. Um, and at that point, you know, an experienced gaffer, he's going to know, uh, again, knowing what the set is, knowing what the blocking is. Um, they're going to know what light fixture to choose, what type of control we're going to need to uh, use with it, where we're going to need to place it. And again, it's just a faster way of working um, without, you know, me trying to dictate you know, micromanage people's, uh, you know, people's work. Uh, so that's why I'm using foot candles again, because foot candle is a relatively absolute measurement of uh, the quantity of light. And uh, it's independent, it's completely independent of what camera we're using. Then it becomes, you know, strictly my job of knowing, you know, 15 foot candles at what ISO, at what T-stop is going to give us the image that we need. So light meters and foot candles. Mm -hmm.